Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today, a rather complicated grounding question comes from uh, Keith uh, Victor Oscar One Alpha Echo. He lives in, let's see, um, take the pause out. He lives in western Newfoundland in uh, Canada, way over in the east uh, part of Canada, meaning he's pretty far north. Uh, he'll get some horrendous winters up there and a long summer, and during the summer the sun will be up for a very long time. Of course, in the winter it will be down most of the time. Okay, so he read uh, my article on grounding matters and says it got his attention. He started ham radio in 1979. Uh, time when conditions were great for a few years. He's referring to the sun conditions, the ionospheric conditions, and, and having propagation. Uh, then came a move when band conditions were terrible and he didn't set it up again. Last year I retired and finally got set up again a couple months ago using a 20 meter dipole. Well, welcome back onto the air and your old equipment probably works fine. He says, the uh, grounding arrangement leaves something to be desired. Well, we can always improve our ground. Um, now, improving the grounding does a couple things. One, it uh, can help you have a quieter signal from your antenna. Second, it can reduce RFI in your shack. And third, it provides a nice place for lightning to go in case that lightning affects your antenna. Now one thing I'm going to talk about, if you put up an antenna on a, now let's do it this way. If you put up a kite and it's held by a wire rather than a string, it has to be pretty thin, very strong wire, uh, up there, okay, and you touch that wire, you're going to get quite a shock the wind passing over a conductor, exposed conductor, is going to create static and very large amounts of it. One time I left a, a fairly new uh, radio, it was a little ICOM handheld, connected to a um, J-pole on the roof, and, but not connected to ground. And the next morning, the uh, radio was unresponsive. The wind, just the wind, over that antenna had created enough of a static charge to blow out the front end. There was no path to ground for that static charge. I've learned ever since that you want to make sure that you have a decent path to ground for um, all of your antennas and so on. This is what the lightning arrestor is for. Because the lightning arrestor, if you choose the right one, it will spark over um, before you get to the point where you're going to be hurting your radio. Okay, so that's important. Now, he uses an old TV um, ground copper band around the picture tube. Uh, it was perfect for a ground mount, so I silver soldered some lug nuts to the copper. I strongly recommend against soldering anything in any ground lead. And let me tell you why. In the event of a nearby lightning strike, there's going to be large currents flowing through the system. The point of bonding all of this equipment together to a single ground point is that you uh, <clears throat> keep it all at the same voltage level. You the, you know, a, a given wire has a given what is called ampacity, uh, the ability to carry a certain amount of current without overheating. But that same wire can contain extremely large currents for a very short period of time. It will get hot and so on, but it, it, will, it will do it if you choose the right size without burning out. However, it will get, as I said, extremely hot. Enough so that if there is solder on that, that solder can flash past the liquid to the gaseous form and splatter all over everywhere, thus unsoldering that joint. 
So in ground systems, we use compressive connectors. I use hose clamps. There are little ground clamps that you can use to uh, attach one wire to another. You can even go so far as to weld it with copper. There's little ways that you can do that. Um, or if you're a good welder, you could just weld it. Um, but it would require TIG welding or something like that. I don't have that expertise. So uh, he says there is one exception, which was the where the ground wire came to the ground point. He used a screw type lug connector there so it could really tighten down the screw on the heavy grounding wire. Yes, and you want to check these every so often for torque. See, the problem is everything in your building is subject to a certain amount of vibration even at 60 hertz because we use 60 hertz electricity in the walls and those are causing minute vibrations in everything. You can often tell when the power goes out because it becomes suddenly quiet because we don't have that 60 hertz hum. But that hum vibrates all those little connections and can, can cause those connections to slowly loosen over time. So part of your annual maintenance of your station, make sure that it works really well. Okay, now, he's got some specific questions, quite a few. He says, you said to drive an eight foot ground rod. Yes, that's the norm. I use a four foot rod, so right off there's room for improvement. A question though, does the eight foot versus four foot make much difference? The answer is yes, it does. Um, the forefoot will give you some grounding. However, remember the connection of the ground to the pole gets better the deeper you go. So let's just say it's equivalent. Your ground resistance will be half what it is now if you use an eight-foot pole. They're not that expensive. Uh, go down to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever you have at your location there. I'm sure you have a uh, do-it-yourself uh, type store up there. Um, I don't have any grounding to the home copper water pipe. Uh, check your utility entry point. You may find that at that point your copper internal wire is grounded to your utility grounding point. Uh, you're going to want to connect a number six and I would suggest stranded uninsulated wire from your station ground over to the utility ground and bury it. Um, it acts as sort of a ground rod itself and it makes sure that everything in your house stays at the same uh, voltage. Okay, um, we very rarely get uh, thunder and lightning where I live, western Newfoundland, so I'll likely skip the lightning surge or ester. Now, I would encourage you not to do that because of the problem with the wind over wire antennas. And I know that you get uh, northern Atlantic type weather there in Newfoundland. So you're going to get a lot of wind and a lot of rain and things like that. And it can build up a large static charge. Those surge arresters can help protect you against that. You mentioned connecting ground to every piece of equipment. That is the ideal. Um, can't always do that. Always thought the shield was sufficient for most except the rig itself. Well, you want to do, uh, at a minimum, your rig, your antenna tuner, um, and any amplifier that you have. And you certainly can add it to your power supply too. Now, your power supply, most power supplies for amateur radio are built so that the green wire ground in the uh, utility comes through and is the same as the black wire going to your radio. So you've got a ground connection there. Uh, but that's not the kind of ground connection you want for the purposes that I'm talking about here. Okay, so um, Perhaps I should consider adding lug wingnut to gear that doesn't already have them. Yeah, you can. Uh, I will admit that I don't think I have my power supply grounded right at the moment. I should do that. I mean, I should be an example of what I talk about. 
And finally, I have an RF problem with a powered woofer in the shack. Um, I guess a powered woofer is a sort of dog, right? Um, anyway, if it's plugged into AC and I key the rig, it roars. Perhaps improving grounding in a toroid will take care of the problem. First, I'll see if an improved grounding setup does the trick. Two things can be happening. Several things can be happening. One, uh, you are getting a lot of RF right into the woofer, so you would want to put the toroid right at the feed point for the speaker. The other thing that can happen is that um, it's getting into the amplifier that drives the woofer. And that case, that's where you would want to put them. You might be getting conducted emissions uh, in there. Uh, the other thing I do, I have a little speaker system here for my computer on 80 meters. It uh, does not like me to operate 80 meters. And so I simply turn it off when I'm operating. Okay, so Keith, I hope that helps. Uh, we've talked a lot about grounding. I really do encourage the addition of those lightning arresters. Get them for the right power level that you're operating. I use Alpha Delta uh, arresters. You can get them from DX Engineering or your favorite ham store up where you are. Um, so thanks for the very interesting question. And uh, if any of you watch this far, please subscribe. Just click on subscribe for me. It tells YouTube this is a good channel. Please also go to decastlercom slash support for ways to support this channel financially. Keep the channel funds up. And also, please uh, tell others about the channel. Uh, I think it's a fairly good channel. We've got 113,000 subscribers now. So there are quite a few people out there who believe likewise. So until we next meet, 73.